How about now? Does that sound okay to y'all? Volume better? Oh, sweet. Okay, perfect, perfect. Okay, so, hi, yes, welcome. We are out in space today. We are playing Stoneburner, which is a uh, solo-friendly art TTRPG about uh, reclaiming your home and removing the demon-infested, the, removing the demonic creatures that are infesting its halls. I have not done the zombie two shot yet, uh, Jojo. I have, I'm picking a system to use by Sunday and then I'm gonna see when my friends are free for us to play it. And as soon as it's done, I'll come back with a postmortem about how it went. But I did give some of the players a sneak peek about what we'd be doing and they sounded interested in it. So, ha so like super excited about it. But today, like I said, we are playing Stone uh, Stoneburner, and right now I have a press release copy. So I was given this copy of it to review it, drop some information about it, and in case uh, there is a Kickstarter coming up next week. Um, and if. Thanks, Chelsea, for the gifted subs. Um, but yeah, anybody interested, if you're interested in this after replaying, I'm also going to be dropping like a full post-mortem post episode on the 11th as well to coincide with the Kickstarter launch to talk about um, some other things as well about this, its design, its play, all that good stuff, like having all of my thoughts together after playing this. So if you're still undecided about backing this after we play, come and check out, uh, come and check out that post-mortem, which will be up on YouTube and uh, see if I can't convince you then. Just from reading it, I haven't played it. Y'all know that I like to read these things and then play them live with y'all. Um, but just from reading it, I'm like super excited about it. And I am probably going to run this uh, for uh, for one of my paid games. One of my, two of my players are kind of a little tired with the fantasy setting. <sighs> but okay. Let's get started. The universe. I say the universe right as my little projector that makes everything bigger for me decides to reload. One second. Here we go. All right. <clears throat> the universe is large. But the human corpse, the dwarven houses, and the elfic clans are at the center of it all. All fantasy cultures have populated the galaxies using spaceships powered by dwarven engineered FTL engines. These are people from all backgrounds in each city, ship, space station, corporation, mine, settlement, and haven. The social center of the universe revolves around the planet-wide city of Hammerside. Each district, city, planet, system, and space station have their own laws and customs. This makes every destination unique and exciting. There are orcs, goblins, trolls, fays, centaurs, gnomes, undead, dragons, ghosts and any fantasy culture you can think of and the world there are huge corporations looking at every opportunity to turn a profit nothing will get in their way there are pirates bounty hunters criminals outlaws rebels and more the galaxy is too big to keep an eye on everyone technology is advanced but often intertwined with arcane on some worlds this will look glossy and high-tech rusted and old on others magic is mystical powerful consequential and most importantly unpredictable there are other realities and it is possible to traverse from this one to the other by means of dangerous portals, rituals, and spells. The world of Stoneburner is complex, political, and dynamic. Anything is possible. Play to find out what happens next. Now, let's talk about the actual game. Let's look at the actual rules. Okay, so, while, um, so there's a couple of things to do while you're actually building this out, right? So you're going to you're going to build out your character, which this uh, I'm making this 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 doesn't make the assumption that you have to inherently start off as 
well okay the premise is that you're a bunch of <laughs> you're a bunch of dwarves you or yourself are a dwarf or if you're playing with other people because it's solo friendly so i can play by myself but you can also play in a group um is that you're headed back to this uh long belt system which you've inherited from a relative who's died recently you're reclaiming your home and you're cleaning it back out um but like like it says there are a wide range of people across the world and whatnot so if you didn't want to play if you didn't want to play a dwarf don't feel like you're bogged down to do so uh there's room in the the universe and the world world wow y'all world lore to play something else but okay to start off with here so rolling up a new character so after you've come up with your character's uh name pronouns traits which you can come up with them on your own or you can roll the tables about it there are a number of um there are a number of different tables to do that there are a number of different tables to do that um but after you've like actually come up with like the you know the fluff of your character you're going to choose a kit which is essentially like your background and your class all rolled into one um there are a number of kits to choose from but so you'll choose a kit and inside of the kit you'll get information about your skills um the artifacts you possess so like magical items essentially uh, the different facets you can do um which is kind of like your different facets are going to be okay so each of these facets are uh, kind of help you fill out who you are as a character along with just kind of like the themes of the actual kit that you pick you're gonna have uh, different abilities that you have just based on the kit that you chose you have your resilience which is essentially your hit points you roll for that as well um hit unless the kits say otherwise hit points are uh the same you roll the same amount of hit points for your character as as you would for each kit is it isn't like a 5e where you you know the rogue gets a d8 the barbarian gets a d12 kind of situation <clears throat> and then finally your credits which is the money here like that is going to determine how many things you can uh, buy build use that kind of thing now uh first things first let's make a character I have not made my character yet, so let's do that. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is, uh, we're gonna roll D66, which is two D6s. We're gonna see what that gets us. Okay. All right, so the first thing up for this, All right, so the first thing up for this is gonna be a 64, which means... One second, y'all, I have lost. Okay, so a 64. All right, let's see. Okay, so Har, <laughs> I rolled a 64 and a 46. Uh, har -rar. Um, You know what? I'm gonna stick with uh, the Har part of this and we're gonna go with uh, Harbran. My, my, my little guy is gonna use he, him pronouns. We're gonna go with Harbram. Um, and I'm going to put his, <laughs> or, uh, do you th guys think I should have sticked with Harrar? Okay. Harbram. Okay. Let's see. Harbram pronouns. He, they, just like me. Okay. So I did read through the kits and I already know which kit I'm going to choose. However, let's um, let's still like briefly go over the different kits that are here and like just the little chunk of um, information they have on the top of them for their themes. Uh, and then, hell yeah. I fully 100% support that. 
Um, okay, so the Stanchion. Uh, this is the character, this is the kit that I picked, having gone through all the other ones. I was like, I like a good little funky little strong, powerful little homie. Okay, but the Stanchion, powerful and astute guardian. The world is a treasure, its people, stories, and legacies must be protected. Stanchions cherish the riches of the world and are unwavering in their duty to guard and preserve them. When you play a Stanchion, you bravely protect, rescue, and record. All right, the sinker, brilliant and resourceful mechanic. Any fool can dig a hole, but it takes a skilled individual to keep that hole dry. Breathable and, and ever capable of going deeper. In recent times, that skill set has broadened into robotics, gunnery, and jury rigging. When you play a sinker, you repair, create, and support. The sounder, perceptive and preserved perseverant hunter. Things get lost or stolen. People disappear or flee. The sounders are those in the dwarven society who walk in the darkness, uncovering the unseen and shining their light in search of the lost. When you play a sounder, you learn, track, hunt, and discover. The striker, nimble and professional warfighter. Most dwarves serve for a term in one of the militaries that guard the clan. Uh, that guard the clan forges and mines, but some develop a taste for the soldiering life, rising into com rising into a commando unit or departing to serve in a mercenary company. When you play a striker, you take a you take a point, move fast, and break things. Uh, so those are the <clears throat> excuse me five kits that you currently have access to in this uh, in this playtest creator kit that we were given access to. I don't know if there's plans for more to be added, but this is what we have so far. Um, I went with the, I went with the, um, I went with the Stanchion specifically because I do like being just a kind of a big beefy buff. I mean, any of them could be big and beefy, but I like the idea of being a protector of things. Uh, so this is kind of what we're going with at this moment. All right, but to talk more about the Stanchion, I haven't done, I haven't actually done any, besides knowing what I'm, what class, what kit I'm picking, I haven't done any of the other stuff that you're supposed to do when you do this, because I wanted to do it with y'all. All right, so. The Stanchion, powerful and astute guardian. We've already read over this. Um, so part of when you get in here with the kits, the reason I said, oh, hey, it's part uh, class and park background because it literally is your backgrounds in here. So you have some choices to make, right? You could be, uh, you could do the teacher, you could do the seeker and you could do the broken. Now, I, I don't actually know what I want to do here, right? Because all of these seem pretty good, right? Teacher, you were a scholar in a monastery far, far away. Seeker, you were a hunter of rare artifacts and broken you uh, nearly lost everything in attacks against your monastery they all sound great and i don't i don't know if y'all know this about me yes yes thank you <laughs> um i am not a paladin main but i appreciate paladin mains and their stances and stanchion is giving me giving me those feels um i don't know if y'all know this about me but i like to be in pain when it comes to character backstories and stuff um if, if, <laughs> if I'm allowed to get away with it, I will be a sad motherfucker, even if I'm making a like more bubbly and, and like happier, chill character like Corrin. Um, so I love a broken little dude. You know, that really should be, uh, that should be my personal model. And like, honestly, Starlight Tales personal model. I love a broken little dude. Um, <laughs> um, but, yeah, I don't know. You know what? I don't know what I'm going to do, so I'm just going to roll a d6 about it. Okay, we are going with the broken. All right, so since we're going with the broken... Paladins are a lot of fun. Okay, since we're going with the broken, let's move over to this... Let's move over to my little journal area right here. So that we can actually answer some of these questions. Okay. Some of the questions found in the broken. So who attacked you? What did they do? All right. Background. All right, let's 
make this bigger. Okay. Who attacked you? What did they do? <laughs> um, okay, so since we already have the information about how like the elfic clans, the human corpse, and the dwarven clans uh, kind of exist around each other, we know there are mercenary games. I'm gonna say it was an elven corporation. Let's make it a little. Let's let's make it about. Um, who attacked me? What happened here? Okay. So, a human corporation, which let's go back and name the human corporation since there's dice to roll about that as well. Um, let's see. Let's see. Go to the first name. Actually, hold on one second. No. Okay, so not featured in this in the slide since I was like, let's talk about the things that we're actually using here. So the actual preview has Hello. Okay, there we go. Okay, so the actual uh, preview of the product, it's about 35 pages long. It does, um, there is some like work in progress stuff in it, which it's the create, it's uh, like, you know, it's a play test creator kit, like for, so it doesn't have everything in it just yet, but everything in it that is completed is really good. Um, and since we were focusing on like, hey, I'm a part of a Dwarven clan, I was like, let me give them the things that they need to know immediately to play this. But you do have, there are a lot of tables in here, one of them being, uh, two of them being really, you can roll for like human corporations and elfic clan names uh, just to help out with your world building and whatnot. And so let us pull that up so that we can roll about it because it was definitely a corporation that, uh, uh, wanted to wanted to move us from where we were because there were resources and then in my personal opinion I my guy um uh Harbrum um Harbrum can't prove it but they totally sent like their fucking death squad or whatever to come and deal with us uh maybe maybe in the future he can prove it and avenge his uh avenge his monastery but let's roll about it. So uh, all of these tables do use like the D66, which is again, just two D6s uh, to actually get it going. Wait, actually, I take that back. I totally lied. These tables use two D20s. And so let's go. All right. So uh, human corporation name. The first one is a 15, which is going to be Prox Proxima. And then the second part is harvest proxima harvest you know what that's perfect proxima harvest what did they do okay so all right proxima harvest a Corp that prides itself on finding and cultivating the rarest of plants, crops, etc. All right, here we go. Okay. Uh, Harbram's monastery was, uh, what was, what was it? It was, uh, located in an area with enriched soil needed to grow one of their rare plants. 
tried to buy us out. Wasn't an option. So sent a death squad. Clear everyone out. Only escaped. due to their mentor. Like I said, let's be sad. <laughs> um, okay, so next part, uh, you were able to keep something from your home. What is it? Ooh, you know what, you know what I think it is? I think uh, Harbram, yep, Harbram uh, managed to grab a book of flower pressings pressings that was part of his training at the monastery all of the flowers were flowers grown on the graves of his fallen siblings and around the monastery Okay, and finally, you still keep some part of your faith. How do you express that? Okay, so... For the purposes of this, I think... I think, like, um... Uh, Caroline, because you mentioned, like, as a paladin main, I'm correct about, like, this little thing. I kind of feel like uh, Stancheons, in, in my head, are fulfilling that kind of paladin-like role. And obviously, this doesn't have to be true for you and, and playing this and whatnot. But I think the whole astute protector and defender and whatnot in my version of this world is very much tied to faith and religion. Um, just for the hell of it. So I think... I think just the simple fact that my guy is still out here going out, clearing uh, clearing out the hall so people can come reclaim their homes is him engaging in his faith because he hadn't finished his, the reason he was still there at the monastery when all this happened, he hadn't finished his training. Like there's a whole process to go through. He actually had maybe, I think the training is tied to how, like to the, the flower pressings in the books and how many pages. And I think he was right around the cusp of being done um, and yeah, just went out and continued to spread the faith and continued to do good works as a stanchion. Continuing to guard. Dangerous places so the legacy of their stories can be preserved. Um, okay, so that is what we got for that. We're gonna head back over to this PDF. PDF, because uh, right now it's more of a, um, it's a Google slide. It's a, it's a Google document slide right now. Um, but okay. So the next part up, we have our skills, right? So, uh, as it was, as it, as it was mentioned, uh, previously, when you get your kit, you get the things, you get your skills, there is strength, dexterity, and willpower. And your, this tells you what like dice you use. So to play this game, you're going to need a D20, a D12, a D10, eight, six, and four, right? And so the, uh, your various skills either use a D8, a D4, or a D6, um, and so for me, because I'm a stanchion, my highest stuff is strength and my lowest, my lowest is dexterity. And so I've got my D6, my D8, and my D4. And the way skills work, so let's say that you had a, like, you had a, a check you had to do with your skills. Let's say that I needed to do something strength related. I would do so. I'd, I'd take my D8, I'd roll, I'd roll it, and it's going to, there's a ta there's tables that say, oh, hey, on a D8 from a one to two or three to four, it like, tells you what the result is. But after I've made that check and I've rolled a D8, so I rolled a four, we'll talk about what those results look like in a little bit. Um, after I've used that D8, my strength goes down to a D6 and then goes down to a D4. And then when all of your stuff is, <laughs> um, and then when you're like, die or done, 
you can take a uh, you can take a short rest in the middle of like an action scene to try and like replenish them or whatnot. But there it will mean complications on the battlefield. So let's say we're fighting a um, let's say we're fighting some type of demon, and I'm like shit, my strength die is down. I need to take a short pause kind of situation. Um, sure, yeah, you can do that. I can replenish my strength die, but then another something else changes in the battlefield. Probably not to my <laughs> to my benefit, right? Um, versus if you're in a safe place and you have the time for it, you can take akin to a long rest and just get your stuff back without any like narrative or combat related consequence. Um, okay, so then next up we have our artifacts, uh, which is a cold wash rune and a uh, frostbite rune and what that looks like. So your shotgun has um, explosive bullets and my frostbite, my frostbite rune is my power armor is now imbued with uh, frost runes. And then you have your facets. So throughout the game, you may always rely on your shotgun, your shield, your power armor and your jetpack and your pure determination. And then we also have a bunch of abilities, right? Okay, so we've got commander. When you try to convince or to, or intimidate someone, roll with the upper hand. So upper hand is just the name of advantage here, and then uh, lower hand is obviously disadvantage. Um, light in the dark. Uh, you may use your shotgun to shoot magical flares in the room. This lets you see better in the dark. The flares also burn brighter in the direction where you should be headed. Overcharged. Using the power of your jetpack and resistance of your shield, you may charge at one target with immense strength. And okay, each of these, um, each of these abilities do have a cost. Well, they have a cost next to them, right? So you see, commander is a zero charge. The light in the dark is two. Overcharged is two. Excuse me. Um, so as you run out of actual charges, you'll need to take a short or a long rest to get your stuff back. Uh, pretty straightforward so far. And then we've got a couple more. So we've got protector. You may put yourself between someone and an imminent threat in order to safeguard them. I love anything that lets me interpose myself between uh, those I'm meant to protect or care about and a villain. And then of course you have Heart of Ice. Uh, you may unleash a powerful cone-shaped blast of frost in a cone in front of you, which instantly freezes anything it touches, requires uh, the frostbite rune artifact, which I do have. Okay, next up, to keep talking about how the game is played, right? So uh, you've got three skills, as I already said, strength, dexterity, willpower, your strength, how, uh, which I think the three kind of speak for themselves. Uh, nothing like new here with what these three things mean. Not to say that that's bad or anything. Uh, you know, they're three different uh, skills that we as people would recognize and understand. Um, but so performing a check. So performing a check, like I said, is gonna depend on what your die is. So you'd either use a skill or an item if you have it. So let's, like I said, let's say that I had a, um, Let's say that I had a, let's say I did something with my dexterity, right? And so the way to perform the check works, so some of these things do have uh, different ranges of what's successful and what's not based on your die, but for actually performing a skill or a check, it's just gonna be a one to two is a failure, a two to four is you succeed, but then there's a, something that doesn't quite mark, work out like a minor cost and then five plus if you greatly succeed so let's say that i did something with my dexterity the most my dexterity is a four is a d4 the most i can get is like i succeed but there's a minor cost right and so i rolled a one i i failed um and there's a major cost and let's say i was trying to uh dexterously move out of the way of some falling boulders or whatnot i failed major cost i don't know like my leg gets broken or something or something worse than that what a major cost can be is gonna really depend on the situation and you're just gonna have to like you're gonna have to kind of uh play it by ear uh you or the storyteller if uh you're not playing by yourself and then so you also have catch your breath breath not breast breath uh, to reset all your skills uh, to their original uh, ratings, you can catch your breath. This is a brief break in tension and can be done at any time, even during combat. When you catch your breath, you need to introduce a new complication to the scene. Uh, like I said, so if all of your stuff gets depleted, all of your stuff is down to D4s, you can just be like, okay, I need to take a quick beat and redo my things, but something's gonna change in the scene that you're in. Uh, and probably not for the better, but who's to say? 
excuse me. Okay, you also have grit. You essentially have like one grit point per like rest that you do. So when you rely on grit, you perform a feat of pure power and determination. You roll your D12, which is where one of the ways the D12 comes in, um, in place of a skill or item when doing a check. Once used, you'll need to catch your breath or take time to rest before using it again. Uh, so if you're... <laughs> If you really just want to power through something, you can say, you know what, I'm going to use my grit for this right now. It's a D12, so you do have a much better chance of getting that plus five. I say that as I'm about to roll my D12. Okay, I did get a 10, so shit would have been great for whatever that is. But yeah, you have this like one little grit in your back pocket and you can like, if you wanted to continue continuously have your grit, you can keep catching your breath, but that is just going to make things more difficult moving forward for you. And all right, uh, resilience. Resilience is your hit points. So your character's overall well-being is your resilience. Um, if the action results in a consequence, you may have to take a hit on your resilience. If you ever reach zero or less resilience, you are taken out of the. Uh, you are taken out of. Um, you are taken out or die, depending on what the situation is. And like I said, your resilience is one d four plus two. Uh, so oof, let's roll that real quick. I'm actually not looking forward to that. Oh boy. Um, <laughs> I got a four. I got a funky little four. Let me make a note of that. Four resilience. Oof. Okay, uh, so items, you can have a variety of items. You can have artifacts, which are like the little things, um, like the frost the frost runes and whatnot. You can also have, let's see. Um, I've never, wait, actually. Yeah, I was about to say I've never played Power by the Apocalypse, but that is a lie. I did play a, a Power by the Apocalypse at one point, yeah. Yeah, uh, I, I, Callum, I think, yeah, saying it's similar to that would uh, make I think that is an apt comparison, yes. Um, okay, so, let's see. Okay, uh, so yeah, you can have a variety of items, and then of course you have your abilities. So uh, abilities are kit talents, and each ability has an energy cost indicated by the little like uh, lightning bolt next to it. Um, you cannot uh, you cannot step down a skill below a D four. Um, okay, so. To use an ability, step down one or more, uh, one or many skills matching the energy cost. So if we go back to the stanchion real quick, just real quick, if we go back to our little guy, um, and we looked at, okay, so let's take Heart of Ice, for example, right? So Heart of Ice, I can, so the way that the, the way that these abilities would work, so it costs three, it costs three charges for the Heart of Ice. I have a D. I'd have to use a D8 for that one because every time like I step down for, I step the die down forever for how many charges it costs. So the D8, 56, D4. The D8 goes down to a D4 from that. Um, and then after that, I can't step it down any more than a D4. So I'm just kind of out of luck in trying to use that uh, Heart of Ice ability at that point until I reset myself. Uh, so uh, you're using your skills, attacking as well, um, using your abilities are all going to decrease your your actual die that you're like associated with until they're all down to D4s. <laughs> And I mean, you you can, as far as attacking and stuff goes, you can stick with a D4. Like you do damage even with a, like one to two on a D4 and whatnot. It's just gonna take a lot longer. Um, but okay, let's keep going. All right, so uh, you can get loot. So you um, during an excursion, you can loot a mine for its items and whatnot. And uh, at the start of an expedition, you start with a D12 loot die. That's another reason to use the D12. And you are going to 
So let's say I go into a room and I'm like, oh, I want to loot this. I roll my d12. I got a five and I find I get a d4 item. No, actually, I get a, I get a d6 item, right? And after I've used that d12, it goes down to a d10 and so on and so forth. And um, it gets reset the same. It, it can also be reset, but at a certain point, you're just kind of out of, you're just down to the d4 only for your loot die. Yeah, it's a fun little like die detriment. Mm, nope. It's a fun little system with the dies increasingly um, decrementing. Uh, and again, this is this is made with the Breathless system, which is also by the creators of this game. Um, and then projects, so I can uh, work on a long-term project to acquire or forge an item like a magical artifact or some gear. And depending on, um, so when ready, I'll roll my project die, which means I get to decide. Uh, all right, so when beginning a new project, make a note on it, uh, your character sheet, and assign it a D4 project die. As you work on it uh, in the fiction, increase it as the die pro as die progresses are made. So let's say that my little stanchion is like, I want to make a holy weapon that is going to, you know, obliterate undead i'd start with the d4 i'd roll about the successes right so for example if you see here uh one to two something went wrong um you can't craft the item three to four you did it you craft an item with the same rating as the dice you rolled uh so it starts off with a d4 <laughs> but uh so i can't get higher than that five um However, the two did not work right so the two didn't work but it increases as you keep making stuff so your chances of actually making it do get better um but you can still fail so like like i just rolled a fucking i rolled i rolled a two on the d4 i then moved it up to a six a d6 and i rolled another two so i failed a fucking again but the die goes up as time goes on so you you do get better at what you're crafting through failure um but you can still keep failing which i think is fun i think is a nice little fun time okay so Great, great. We are making great time on going through this. As soon as we finish it, we're gonna get some live play in here. Very excited about this. Okay, so challenges. When, you, when you're facing a complex challenge, um, you can have a number of checks for it. And so looking at the uh, little checks challenge type, so three checks is for a daring challenge, five checks is for a risky challenge, and eight checks is for a perilous challenge. And uh, as a reminder, every time you make a check, <laughs> every time you make a check, whatever you're using, like, the die, whatever die you're using, it goes down to a lower die until it's at a lower poss lowest possible die. So the more things you have to do, the harder it gets as you go along. Uh, so be wary of that. But it's a fun little funky little time. And uh, as far as like doing checks and whatnot, if you're playing with somebody else, you can both roll a check, but they also, so let's say, Let's say Caroline, you and I were playing this game together and we wanted to do like, uh, we wanted to do a challenge or a check together. We both roll whatever the die is for that check. And then we would get to pick the higher of the number. But if, if, if both of us failed, um, both of us would take a, would take a, like kind of a penalty or a cost for that. So we share in the riches and we share in the failure kind of situation. Um, and so for, okay, so combat, pretty straightforward it's very easy in my opinion way easier than like DD in a lot of cases or at least quicker um so combat uh combat is an exchange made uh, of rounds and turns so whoever initiates combat goes first so if i hop in here and i start just hammering into some demons i'm the first one up and then it's and then it's uh their turn to do what they want to me and um you just repeat this process until everyone has had their turn during the round um, the last participant to act in the round gets to pick who starts at the next one. So let's say I, let's say that I had start initiated this fight with the, uh, with the demons. So they're the last in the round. <laughs> they probably would say, well, we're going first next. And that would put me last in the round. And then I'm like, I'm fucking going first next kind of situation. So you don't even, you don't have to track any initiative orders or anything. It's just about who started what first. And then it kind of, it can bounce back and forth very easily because unless like, I don't know, there's some strange strategy going on. Your bad guys are probably going to want to go first, which then means you get to go last and say i'm going first next and back and forth and back and forth um so the different act uh, so the different action types you can uh change the battlefield using um <clears throat> okay so you may want to change uh your surroundings 
uh, to get like an upper hand or something. Or you, uh, so if you're running this, if you're playing this by yourself, you're gonna wanna like make sure you're thinking about the descriptions of what's happening where you are and whatnot, specifically so that you can say, oh, uh, I know that there is like, uh, I don't know, some loose rock over here. Can I hit it and cause it to like help me do this so I can get the upper hand in something? Um, you can also attack an enemy. Uh, attacking your enemy is gonna be based on like what die uh, you're using, right? So if if I'm attacking an enemy, I'm using my strength die, which is a D8. And so you do damage regardless of how, of like what you roll, it just depends on how well you roll. So what, I just rolled a seven on my D8, which means uh, that tar whatever I was hitting is gonna take three points of damage, three hits to it, right? Um, you can activate an ability. So like my uh, overcharge ability or my commander ability, um, you can move a great distance. So if like your target is far away from you, you might have to use your whole turn to get to them. Um, the enemies, the enemies work the same way that we do. Yeah, exactly. Like using the loose rocks to create a landslide maybe. Exactly, yeah. Um, so the enemies work pretty much the same way as we do. The difference here is, <laughs> you know how we have to de decrement our die as we use it to attack things and we have to stop and take a breath if we want to get them back? They don't have to do that. <laughs> they just get to keep their shit the way they want it. <laughs> um, they just get to keep doing what they want to do. All right, next up in this is Visions of Glory. So I don't think we're gonna get to this part. I don't think we're gonna get to this part in the gameplay, but um, Visions of Glory. So at the end of a session, you're, you get vision. You get a vision of glory from, uh, from your ancestors, giving you a glimpse into what your future is. Um, and so at the end of the session, you roll, you roll about it, and then you write it. You write, you write it down in your little journal. You write it, you write about it a little bit, and then. Excuse me. <clears throat> when you get, as part of rolling for what that uh, vision is, you could get an advancement result from that. So like you could get something from that vision of glory. Um, and you can use that advancement once to like, I mean, like it says advance. I was literally trying to figure out what's a, what's a way to say you can use that advancement to advance. And I'm like, let's just say it like that, even if it sounds kind of weird. Um, another thing that is, so I don't know how many of you were here when I was playing Firelight, it's by the same creator, and there is an Oracle option in that as well. We also have an Oracle option in here as well. So you can reach out and ask an Oracle questions about like, hey, is this safe? Is this dangerous? Where are we going? And depending on what you roll, you'll get an answer of, um, <clears throat> so first, the die that you roll is gonna, de is, is, the die that you're gonna choose to roll depends on how likely it is. So like, what if, if I'm asking, hey, am I gonna become the ruler of the entire fucking galaxy or something? Like, like just something weird, right? That's not very likely. <laughs> I'd roll with a D4 um, and one to two, the answer is no and, three to four, the answer is yes but, and five plus, the answer is yes and. Okay, no. No, I'm not gonna become the ruler of the galaxy and maybe something else bad is gonna happen there. Right? Um, uh, and you can also, there's also an option here for like the risky oracle to uh, to kind of determine or just kind of wash your hands of, oh, is this gonna be risky or not? Um, again, if you're, <clears throat> if you're asking a kind of, if you're asking something risky, <laughs> that's a detail. If you're asking something, um, <laughs> if you're asking something risky, again, it's up to you to decide how unlikely or very risk. It's up to you as the player or the storyteller to decide how like unlikely to likely the risk thing you're taking. So if I'm like, hey, if I jump out of my fucking ship, how risky would it be for me to do that? Like, I think that'd be pretty fucking risky. So I, I, I think it'd be. Um, I think it'd be very unlikely for it to succeed. So again, I'd roll the D4. And um, apologies, y'all. So the very unlikely, unlikely, likely, very likely, almost certain is like, oh, it's very unlikely to be risky. It's very, uh, it's, it's likely 
um, it's unlikely to be risky. Like for the, whereas the other one is answering a question of like, oh yeah, this is almost certainly going to happen. This one is like, oh, this is almost certainly going to be risky kind of situation. So uh, with my D4 on that one to two, it's like, okay, what I just suggested, maybe it's not that, maybe, maybe it's not that super risky. Maybe not, maybe not. Um, but if I, but I would actually not use a D for if first asking, am I gonna jump out of my fucking ship into the deadness of space? I'd probably use like a D, at, at least a D8, if not a D10. Um, and <laughs> And like the more, the riskier, I think the action that I'm asking about is, the higher the dice is what I would actually use for that. And then, all right, so uh, sell and savage and salvage, wow. Okay, so as you're going through this thing and you're finding loot and whatnot, you can come out, you can sell the stuff, you can sell them to a variety of people. Um, I do have to roll about how much, how many credits I have. You start off with 1d4 times 100. I have 200 credits right now, right? Um, credits can be used to buy gear, uh, uh, different items, but also used to rebuild your home, right? Because that's the premise of the game. You're coming back to lead your clan, you're coming back to reclaim your home, um, and you can buy a number of buildings based on their cost, the tavern, the library, the armory, the infirmary, and all of these things take about a week to build. Um, so while that is happening, it's kind of treated as like a week of downtime or whatnot. Or I mean, you could be going back out into the nothingness of space but me personally if I was running this for other players which I will be um, I'd be like hey this is gonna take about a week I suggest you take it as downtime if you want to get into anything here if not we can go back out on another adventure um, and then let's see ooh okay okay this is this one I had a lot of fun with the uh, how you actually generate the map and whatnot so you're gonna take all of your dice and you're gonna roll it on a piece of paper and uh, as soon as you like as soon as you've done that, right, you're going to circle the ones that are near each other to like kind of determine, to determine what is in what like area next to each other. And then you'll consult the tables. There are tables that are like, oh, hey, here's here's what's in this sector. So this is the first section. If on a, on a D, on a four for a D6, it's this. Uh, so like on a four, on a D6 is a demon portal. On a four for a D... What is that? Is that a D8? On a four for a D8, it's a mineral deposit kind of thing. I did this already, but the game does ask that when you like, or let me, let me go. To, okay, so this is my map right here, right? Come on. Okay, so this is my map right here. My starting point, I got an eight on the D20, and then I have all of these areas over here, right? And the game does ask when you're playing by yourself to like not look up where your points of it to not actually mm -hmm. I, I, I love a good homestead building as well I love a good system like that um when you're playing by yourself the game does ask you to like not actually look up what these like what the d what the dice represent for your locations until you get there but I wanted to but this is a demo so I'm showing y'all what this would look like and whatnot um and when you're playing with other players it does encourage you to like do this together so this is also a really good world building thing as well but yeah, so from my starting point, I know that I can go over here to the fluorescent mushroom fields or the abandoned boots and cloths or the ventilation system. There's a red glowing tunnel. Uh, there's a crashed spaceship. And okay, so right now there's only this one section for the sector information uh, for sector one, because again, this is just a, like a creator's kit thing. The Kickstarter is not out yet and they will definitely have more. But using that information for my sector one, I actually had there been had there been more uh, more tables, I would have done like the three. There are three sections there. They each would have been three different sectors for me. But from what I have, I looked at the D4, the D6, the D8, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, to see what their locations were based on the number that I rolled on the die, and I put them there. And then you also get a D20 event table to use um, per your sectors. Again, there's one one sector right now for this product. And when I get into that sector, when I get into that sector, I can roll a d20 to decide what's happening there. Right? And then just to go over the just to go over the funky little demons real quick. 
So there are a number of like, that's part of the premise of the game, right? There are a number of demons that you can be here fighting, uh, fighting with. And the longer a demon is here, the stronger it gets. And so there are tables that are like, oh, here are the smaller demons and they only have like three hits. Here are the bigger demons, a literal demon lord, and they have 21 hits. I wouldn't suggest going after, right? Isn't it such good little funky little designs? <laughs> I honestly, when I was looking at this, I was like, God, this makes me want to monster monster build so much they were they're so they're such cool little guys um but the longer a demon is here the stronger it gets <laughs> and the stronger it gets the more hit points it gets all the way up into the point from an imp with three to a demon lord with 21 um i wouldn't want to go up against that by myself with my measly little four hits um as demons should be, I agree. That it's a fun little progression. Um, but yeah, that's the that's pretty much the gist of this game so far. Uh, and like I said, we made perfect time. It's right around ten. I'm gonna take a quick uh, five minute break. <sighs> I was a I. You know what? I can't even. I'm not even gonna judge anybody being horny on main in my comments about demon art because who same um but we're gonna take a quick little we're gonna take a quick little break we'll be back at the uh ah, let's just make it an even eight minutes we'll be back at the 10 minute mark and then we're gonna dive into actually playing this i'm super excited about it so be right back y'all uh in the meantime if you joined us late don't uh don't forget to check out sternborn check out the kickstarter get uh notified for when it launches on april 11th so next tuesday but yeah be right back y'all
All right, y'all. Uh, now that I'm back. <laughs> All right, y'all. Now that I'm back, let's dive into this. So, previously when we checked out my uh, little notes for this, my little uh, system that I made, there was a uh, glowing red tunnel, right? And I don't know about you, but that screams demonic entities to me. So... That screams demonic entities to me, so I think the first place that we should go is to that uh, glowing red tunnel. <sighs> Rouse? Is that my funky little friend? Is that my little homie from my Thursday night games? Hello, hello. <laughs> Listen, listen, enough, uh, y'all, my chat is being a little, uh, feral about a little war criminal. <clears throat> Not a real war criminal, y'all, for those that don't, don't get the joke. <laughs> um, but, uh. <laughs> Hi, welcome, we're playing, uh, we're doing a playthrough of Stone Barner. We're doing a play... Oh, yes. You know what? You know I support you ignoring work so fucking much. Don't get fired, though. We are playing Stoneburner. Um, it's a little press kit, little thing that I was uh, given to actually show y'all. And it goes, the actual Kickstarter goes live on April 11th. And so we, the first part of this was going through the rules and stuff, just giving it a breakdown. And now the current part of it is let's actually play it. And in generating the world, there was this glowing red tunnel. And I think that means demons. And so I want to go fight some demons. Now there is a table. There is definitely a table that you can roll to determine what random events happen, but I kind of want to showcase the combat here. I kind of want to showcase some combat here. Um, also, on the note of combat, like just the way it's handled, you don't really have to like since since you can like do since you don't really have movement in this unless you're trying to move very far away, you don't actually have to have like a battle map or anything. I don't know if I actually would if I was doing this. And theater of the mind isn't like my biggest biggest thing. Um, I'm getting better at it, but like this feels very much like a theater of the mind mind type situation. The only thing I might suggest is like maybe. Well, if I, if, when I stream this again, <laughs> because I'm going to stream it again, I'm going to have a funky little battle map and a little roll 20 thing going on just for like something to look at while I'm playing and rolling my little funky little dice. Um, but okay. So it is just me, Harbrum, he, they, a, oh, I, I didn't describe my little funky little guy. All right. This, so first off, as much as I love to play a tall king. <laughs> I will play a, a short king today. Um, four foot seven, four foot seven is built like those like big, um, thick, beefy, rotund, like power builder type guys, like the, the strong man type build. Um, a whole full beard that just covers everything. Like it when he doesn't open his mouth, you you, you can't you don't even notice if he has a mouth, just just like that. Um has has dreadlocks, has little, has little dreadlocks. Yes, my particular dwarf. Short, short kings are so valid, but I, as a five foot seven, eight trans man, just really want to be tall <laughs> and I'm never going to get to live that dream. A space marine mini sized up. Mm -hmm. Um... But yeah, so I like a uh, short little guy, beard covering my whole entire mouth, fucking dreadlocks, shaved, uh, shaved, shaved all the way around. So it's just like right here at the tip. Right? <laughs> um, and yeah, that's just my big little hulking little guy. D like dark brown skin. Um, pro Ooh, you know what? Has a long scar along the left side of the face from being attacked at the monastery. You're five to... You're not allowed to play in my games anymore, Rouse. I'm sorry. I'm kicking you out. Go tell the others. Um, anyway. <laughs> uh, let's get into it. So, here I am. 
Harbram. My grandfather has died and left me to come back and lead the lead our clan and to reclaim the Longbelt region. Uh, Callum, yes, you would be banned. I'm sorry. Anybody that's five, nine or taller, you can't play with me. Um, it makes me sad. Anyway, my character Harvum has returned to the Longbelt region alone, no crew, um, 200 credits to his name to come back and reclaim his home and, and really build back up the community. Tall people in my comments right now being a little shit. Um, but anyway, has gotten over to, so there's three, there is three sectors and while kind of maneuvering through the long belt, so the long belt itself is just like the general area, right? And then the three sectors while maneuvering my way through this on my engine, a strange red light off in the distance has caught my eye and, uh, steer off towards that. I get to this like asteroid that has a gigantic, think, um, think the doors to, uh, not mortar, fuck me. Uh, Lord of the Rings, the doors to the underground dwarven Moria. Think the doors to Moria, that kind of tall doors and just kind of glowing red lights. Going inside of it, I immediately can tell that this like tunnel has actually been expertly carved out. It's not natural work. It's clearly something that my clan mates have done at some point or another. And just kind of, there are a lot of branching buildings uh, or not a lot of branching hallways, but the glowing light is further and further in. But I am gonna stop and check out these, uh, I am gonna stop and check out these buildings, right? I'm gonna see what's actually in them in case there's something that has been left behind so that I can get some loot. So, the game starts off with a D12 loot die and I'm gonna roll about it. Okay. Um, the reason that there might be something left here is because the miners that worked here, the constructionists, all of them have fled in haste, probably due to the fucking demon infested halls. Who knows? Y'all, I had a D12. I had a D12 and you know what the fuck I rolled? If you roll a three or higher, you get some item. You get something. If you roll a one to two, it's there's troubles ahead. I rolled a two. I did not roll a one. <laughs> I rolled a two, but it's functionally a one. Jesus fucking Christ. Okay, all right, y'all. Okay, trouble ahead. I mean, this is the perfect time for there to be demons, I guess, since I rolled so fucking poorly. Okay, so I go into this room and right now, I go into the room and I am trying to look around, see if any of my comrades, my clan mates have left anything behind. Honestly, I hate it here. Um, some things I do see are the skeletons of my fallen uh, clan mates who did not get out quite as quickly. And I think, I think the, the, the way I get myself in trouble is I see something that I think is like a glint of like actual treasure underneath a body. Um, and I pick it up and it is actually a creature coming to attack me. Now, let us determine what fucking kind of creature it is, right? Okay, so, oh God, why is it 2d6s? Hmm. Okay, we're gonna roll 2d6s, right? So to determine, so the way that you determine, um, like, the demons is... Oh my fucking god. Yeah, okay, we'll say it's a face hugger type demon. Yep, it, and you know what? It's a <laughs> We'll say one of the demons has, like, a face hugger ability, and it's just kind of camouflaging itself to lure me into a fucking trap. All right, so the way you determine demons, so there are three tables to, de to determine, well... There are multiple tables to determine demons, um, but as far as the demon's strength and the demon's health, you roll 2d6. Okay, so I got a six. Okay, so I got a six in total, which means that this is a flaming demon, so their strength score, their strength die is a d6. Whew, okay. All right, now to determine their hit points, right? And this, this the hit points go from three to 21. <clears throat> God, I don't wanna roll this. Y 
Y'all, I have four fucking hit points. I just rolled a fucking eight, which means that this inferno, this, this flaming inferno demon has 13 health. Just by nature of attrition, <laughs> I'm not gonna survive this fight. Just by, just by, just by that pure nature of, uh... Okay, all right, okay. Okay, but here's the thing. It does explicitly call out that you should run away. I'm not gonna die because I'm not staying here, damn it. I'm not staying. I'm leaving. I'm not dumb. I'm not afraid to run away. All right, let's see. Uh, let's roll a d12 to see what kind of fucking ability it would get. No, I do not got, oh my fucking God. Okay, so one of the abilities that these fucking demons have is nightmare and it costs zero, zero fucking, and it costs zero fucking charges to use. Transform into your second form. Step up your health or strength. Are you fucking kidding me? I all right, so Harbrum has gone over to move this corpse and something has just latched onto his face at this point. And because that creature attacked first, it's going to get to attack first, which means it's... Okay, let's go look at what the damage is for a D6. Okay, okay. I could get lucky, right? I have four, okay. Actually, I don't even have to get lucky because at the very least, because I have four hit points, it cannot kill me in one go. It cannot kill me. <laughs> you know what? The next time I play this, I am actually gonna have some additional guys and be like, y'all wanna play this with me? Cause that would be kind of fun. But no, 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 it's fine. It's fine. Gotta show the solo play as well. Okay, so I have gone into this room to try and find some loot. I thought I was gonna get lucky. I did not in fact get lucky. I got really unfucking lucky. I moved the body of one of my clan mates. You know what it is? It's because I went searching for loot underneath a dead body. That's what it is. I was being so fucking disrespectful to my ancestors. Okay, but as a reminder, when you attack, yay. As a reminder, when you attack an enemy, so a one to two, you deal one point of damage. A three to four, you deal two points of damage. And a five plus, you deal three points of damage. Now, um, so like at the end of the day, I cannot be outright killed here. <laughs> um, but, so my little demon guy, my little blazing inferno. Callum, Ral, Rals, I think the two of you should talk uh, uh, since you both are into flirting in, uh, with monsters. Um, anyway, so I cannot die right here. And so because my guy has a D6, it's, it's fine. It's, it's going to be dangerous, but it's going to be fine. Let's see. Okay, I rolled a two. So this thing comes out of nowhere, which in fact, it's its tail lashes onto my face and just cuts up the side of it. I take one point of, I take one point of health. I have two health left. I have two, no, I have three health left. And it is now my fucking turn. All right, so actions in combat, right? Oh boy, what am I gonna do? What am I gonna do? Am I at, uh, okay, I know that I just, oh, wait a second, wait a second. Wait a second. Okay. Okay, here we go. I know exactly what I'm gonna do. So, for, if, <laughs> If you recall, those of you that were here earlier, you know that the way that combat works is the person who goes first, the side that goes first is the one that initiates it. And then the side that goes, whoever goes last gets to decide who goes first next round. So the first fucking thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my fucking strength. I'm gonna use my strength. Well, actually, let's double check that because I know I'm right, but I might be wrong, but I don't think I am. Let's see. Oh, okay, y'all. You know what the only thing that I was actually wrong about is? So I have a D8 right now, so I would need to step down. So you need to step, like if it costs three, I need to step my dice down three times. And you, a D8 becomes a D6, becomes 
D6, one, D4, two, and then I'd, I'd also have to do that with something else. Okay, so here's what's gonna happen right now. So I am in fact, I have an ability. I have an ability that is gonna fix this situation for me right now. So earlier I mentioned an ability called, um, why is, one second y'all, I need to fix, uh, I need to fix the captions. Are you working correctly? Testing, testing. Yes, you are. Okay. So earlier when I went through my different abilities as a stanchion, I mentioned Heart of Ice. You may unleash a powerful cone-shaped blast of frost in a cone in front of you, which instantly freezes anything it touches. Requires the Frostbite Rune Artifact. I do in fact have the Frostbite Rune Artifact. Now, I am going to, I'm going to step down my D8 strength. Wait. Yep, I'm gonna step down my D8 strength and my D6 uh, willpower. Um, so the D6 is gonna become a D4 and the D8 is also gonna become a D4 because <laughs> I need to step down, I need to I need to step it down three times, right? Um, and I am going to let out this heart of ice and it is going to blast into the rest of this creature and it is going to freeze it. Now, I went last in combat, which means I get to go first this round and I am running the fuck away, all right? so. One of the things that you can do in combat is called um, move a great distance, right? And moving a great distance, if you want to move somewhere, but the distance between you are uh, you are too, and your target is too big, you may have to use your turn to get to where you want. And um, when you decide to fight uh, your way through a problem, you will face dangerous non-player characters called enemies. So yes, uh, my great distance is running the fuck away. So right now, this thing is frozen and I am hightailing it the fuck out of there. I have left this combat. Now, could this thing keep ch chasing me? Sure, but... Well, actually, so turn order. So part of the turn order, the combat ends when all player characters or enemies run out of resilience, or if one side, or if one side decides to withdraw from the fight. This fight is over. <laughs> this fight is fucking over. I have done no damage to this creature. All I've done is frozen it in place and run the fuck away. So Harbrim <laughs> has run out of here. Yes, he's a runner. He's a track star. Harbrim has run out of here and is just running, like comes out of this room because I don't think the tunnel leading into this room was very far. Comes out of the room and looks back, right? It, like he, two options, run deeper into this fucking tunnel toward the red light or go back to the fucking ship. Now, because we are doing a, a live, we're doing a, like, you know, a little playthrough right now. I am not going to turn, turn, turn and run tail, right? If this was just me playing, I would actually probably turn and run tail and head back home and reevaluate my situation and see if I couldn't bring more people with me. But that is not what's happening here. We are going to full steam ahead. So let's go. The man comes out of here and just is running as fast as he fucking can. He passes like three or four more tunnels before getting out of breath. Uh, you know, he can run when his life's in danger, but I'm gonna be real here. He is not, um, he is not very strong he, or he is not very, uh, not strong. Um, he's not great with his breathing. He's not very, yeah. Yeah, time to reevaluate his life choices. So. I And just kind of collapses down right now and oh God. yeah no endurance thank you so much oh panion thank you so much for subscribing i appreciate it uh, but yeah just kind of ducks down on the wall it's just like oh my fucking god all right what does this guy sound like you know what is slumped down on the wall thinking to himself all right grandfather wouldn't have sent me here if i couldn't handle this i can do this i can do this I might be jangling something. Hold on a second. Give me one second. I'm gonna mute.
I'm, oh, hey, look at news. Everybody doesn't know one of the uh, creators of Stoneburner is literally in the chat right now. Also, I'm super glad, um, I'm, I'm super glad that you uh, are a big fan of Stoneburner. I am as well. I am like so fucking in love with this thing. <laughs> I, <laughs> I, I'm gonna pitch it as, as a, something to run for some players for a Friday um, paid game. But yeah, this is like, this is such a great little fun little time. But yes, my little guy, my little guy is in some shit. Um, but he is going to get up and he is going to continue trying. He is going to continue trying. Um, okay, so y'all, earlier I looted a room and then got attacked. So my loot die is no longer a D12, it is now a D10. Yeah, 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 yeah. He definitely needs to get the upper hand in that fight. Um, but you know what? His first fight, he's just gonna like, he's just gonna leave it alone. He's like, you know what? I'm actually gonna leave. I'm gonna go somewhere else right now. Um, but yes, my loot die is now down to a D10. And so this tunnel that he has turned himself into, it's kind of a little bit long and winding. So he's gonna go down into this next room and see if he can't find something better, something Come on, do not roll a fucking... Please do not roll a one or two. Thank fucking God. Okay, so, <laughs> um, I rolled, it's better than a one or two, but just barely. I rolled a four, which means I get a D4 item, which... Let's see. All right, give me one second. All right. Oh man, yep, okay. So I get one D4 item and then if we get off of this, if we get off of here alive, if, 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 um, when I go and sell this, so I, the way you handle how much things are going to cost and whatnot and how much you can sell it for, um, is really just, you roll the, you roll whatever the items die is. So I got a D4 and it's one to two, you get 50 credits, three to four, you get a hundred credits. So bare minimum, I'm going to get 50 credits for this item. Maximum, I'm going to get a hundred. I did roll a four. So, uh, uh. If I were selling this, I would get an additional 100 credits for it. But I am going to make a note of this D4. Actually, I can make a note of this on my... Uh, pretty sure I can make a note. No. Ah. Yep. This is the character sheet, y'all. I really like... Okay, so there there is another character sheet that isn't... That's right. Thank you so much. You double the amount for solo play. So actually, I could get 200 credits. Um... <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I rolled it and I was like, okay, yeah, that's fine. With my brain in like, oh, you're going to run this for other people. Oh, no, I'm playing this by myself right now. I get more money. Um, okay. So there is a, so there is a, like a, a character sheet that you can use. That is a, a Google spreadsheet. Listen, y'all don't know this about me. Um, well, Rouse knows this about me because Rouse plays with me. I love, uh, I love a fucking good character sheet. I love a Google spreadsheet as a fucking character sheet. Uh, item. Let me put this in here. Here we go. Loot item, and it is a D4. This is such a great fucking character sheet. Like, oh my god, I love loot item D4. Yep. Two hundred credits. Okay. All right. So he's gone in here. He has found this. He okay. Now that we've now that we've uh, kind of just assumed that there is a demon attack happening, let's actually see what happens when we roll on the. It is really hard to make a really good character sheet. Like I had a friend make a player stat sheet for me to run my games. And and I think it like it works, it's automated, it 
it's automated really well, but like, I don't know if it's like the prettiest. Rouse, if you wanna like say whether or not you think it looks good in the comments, feel free, but it functions. But like making a good one, and one that functions well and looks good is definitely a talent. And uh, I gotta say the creators of this game, whoever they may be, uh, definitely got that down. This is a really good sheet. Um, but okay, so we got in here and I said, oh, there's probably demons in here because of that red glow, it just felt right thematically to me. But let's also like roll on the D20 event table for this first sector that I've done, right? So. A 10 on the D20, okay. Oh boy. Okay, so on this sector uh, event table for Droids that were supposed to be decommissioned have suddenly come back online, resuming their duties. Yeah, the party health sheet. I don't know if it's like pretty enough. I would like to make it prettier. Um, droids that were supposed to be decommissioned have suddenly come back online, resuming their duties. What triggered their reactivation? Where are they getting their power from? Okay, so my man has gone down this tunnel, has uh, actually found an item of sorts. I'm gonna say it's like, you know what? You know what, I, I know it's just a D4 item, but I'm gonna say it's like a really fucking nice industrialized, like mechanized pick axe to get through here. And it's just gonna be excellent for people. Like the, the thing I'm saying about this place right now, it's just been mined out already in a lot of places. Um, but this is gonna, this is gonna be, this is gonna be a lot of money. This is gonna be worth a lot of money and can help toward the resettlement and rebuilding. So he's gonna take this back and, oh, thanks for subscribing, Rouse. He's gonna take this back and then he's gonna just uh, sell it instead of holding on to it for future planning. But, so he's gone down this tunnel, he's come back out of it and, <laughs> We all forget our prime subs, don't we? I forget my prime sub all the time. Um, but he's going to... Anyway, <laughs> he's going to head out of this and continue heading further and further into this tunnel towards this big red glowing light, which knowing my luck is probably a fucking demon lord or something. But like I said, rolled on the event table. And so as he's traveling down this tunnel, this like very clearly um, professionally carved out tunnel, he hears some sound and movement from uh, off to his like right and does pause, has like his shotgun at his side. Anglerfish, God, oh God. Has a shotgun, uh, uh, like, has the shotgun out ready to use it and just kind of slowly walks into this room. And then sees just a bunch of fucking droids, like, mining away. Uh, there's, there are a number of rocks in here that need to be broken down, and that is one of their duties. And, oh my fucking God, that is one of their duties, and that's currently what they're doing. And he's just, they don't even look at him. They uh, they don't look at him. They don't react. They're just going about their duties. And Harbrum is so fucking confused looking at this. Like takes some takes a moment to look around at them. And so to answer the questions, what triggered their reactivation? So in my mind, in my mind, I kind of I kind of wonder if the way these droids work is like when there are other life forms like. Dwar maybe they're supposed to work whenever other dwarves are around so like they get their rest when nobody's around like okay you're powered down for the day for the night whatever and then they come back up when they sense like a dwarf or something or you know anybody in the mines really probably since it's not just dwarves that work in these mines even if it's the dwarven clan mines or whatnot so harbum's presence is what had them power back up what is actually um Where they are getting this power supply from, I'm gonna be so real with you. The first thing that, that came to my mind when I was doing this, when I was thinking about it is, okay, well, what if it's, <laughs> what if it's from, uh, what if it's from whatever is that red glow, right? Because I'm assuming the red glow means demons, but I don't actually know that for a fact, right? Like we could be dealing with some weird, funky little, um, here we go. We could be dealing with some weird, funky little, uh, new power source or something like that so whatever the red glow is causing the red glow 
is also causing them to to actually work and i think the reason he knows that's the case is because okay i know that i'm imagining like the droids from star wars but we're just gonna say that's what they are right now because it's, it's all i can picture but they're uh, you know the little the eye parts that they have like they're glowing red the same red that's coming down and he's just mm -hmm. okay okay this is fine they're not attacking maybe it's not a demon maybe it's just maybe it's just a power source maybe it's just a power source and is going to like slowly back out of this room and just like not my monkey not my circus in this moment nothing's attacking him they're clearing out the area that still has rocks in it so they're doing their job and it's just gonna continue moving forward, honestly. Um, and let's see. I, th I, okay. I, uh. all, all of you in here either know me from playing on Starlight Tales stuff or know me because I run games for you or just because we're like Twitch mutuals. Uh, not like Twitter mutes that I've like played some of your games and stuff. So you wouldn't know me as a player. I love loot. I love loot so fucking much. I, um, and the fact that I don't have a reason to like be such a loot hoardy motherfucker with Corin, my Starlight Tales character, kills me, but it is what it is. And so he's gonna continue to loot some fucking more. That's that's what this man is doing. He's gonna keep looting some fucking more. Well, actually. Um, before I continue having having him loot, I do want to ask a question to one of the authors in the chat. Um, why does your blazing ember specter have a machine gun? Why did you do that to us? I am afraid. I am afraid. I want y'all to know that the, one of the creators is like, wow, why not? Why not? Why not? What kind of answers? None of the chat is on my side about why we have to have a machine gun. They're all like, as it should. Are you sure as it should? Are you fucking sure? Why can't y'all be on my side? I am afraid. I am alone and I am afraid. Okay. All right. Oh, Jesus fucking Christ. Okay. Seems fair. All right. We're going in here and we're going to go. We're going to, we're going to roll some more. Uh, from the creator. Thing is, Galen and I have this idea about demons having an end goal. There's a reason they are there and you are in their way. There's a hidden big bad evil plan behind all of this. You know what? You know what? All of you are saying you have a shotgun, give yourself a machine gun, balance, it's fair. Um, in the sound of a Gatling gun spinning. Any, if any of you come and play at my tables, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna give a monster a machine gun and see how you fucking like it. It can just, it'll, it can even be 5e. It can be in the middle of the, of, um, uh, uh, out of the abyss. The demon lord's gonna show up with a machine gun, all right? <laughs> but no, on, on a real note, it's really the, the artwork for that, evocative, love it, and it makes me afraid, which I wanna be afraid. <laughs> I'll get shot, I don't care. Okay, so our, D, our, our, our D12 die has gone down to a D, has gone down to a D10. I use it again, so it is now down to a D8. So we're going into another room. Inside of this room, I think this room is like, I know I've said like this place has been like mined out professionally, but I don't think all of the rooms are actually mined out in that way. I think that like inside of some of these rooms, like they've been partially mined out and like had like actually well done walls, but this one is only partially done in that way. So there's still like a lot of, um, there's still like a lot of, places to mine and whatnot. And I think my little guy, and I think there might've been a cave in around here, like where it's open. And I think my little guy is gonna take out that like mechanized pick as he's looting. Okay, come on. 
Fucking finally! Finally. Sorry. Okay. So. <laughs> he takes out this mechanized pick and it's just. <sighs> Ooh, breaking into this fucking um, cave-in and just hits gold. I rolled an eight, which means you get a D8 item. <laughs> I now have a D8 item. I don't know what this item is, but loot item. Uh, let's see how much this would cost. I know that we're not selling and salvaging, salvaging things right now, but we're not gonna sell and salvage in this in this stream. So I just kind of really want to know what <laughs> what it is. Let's roll a D8. Come on, come on. Are you fucking? No, of course, of course. Um, okay, all right. Okay, do you know, do you know what the fuck I just... I have a D8 fucking item. I have a D8 item, which means I can get up to an eight. I can get up to 400 credits for this. And do you know what the fuck I rolled? A one! I rolled a one! Which means I'm only gonna get 100 credits for this. I am getting more credits from my D4 item than I am from my D8 item. And you know what? That sounds about right. That sounds about right. Uh, thank you for being here, Renee. Appreciate you joining the stream as I almost die and continue to get... You know what? It's fine. He, your boy is up to... Oh, it's double the loot. So actually your boy has 400 gold, 400 credits to start off with and now has 700 credits in total. I, I uh, the first place that I want to buy, oh, you know what? I have a, with, with the 700 credits, ooh, you know what? I could buy a farm. I could buy a farm right now, okay? The farm. This allows you to cultivate fresher food and herbs to create special meals that can clear up to three stress to a single character at any point during an expedition. I could also buy a library. Um, thanks to this repository of knowledge, once per session you can call for a flashback where you study the type of demon to reveal its greatest weakness, bruh. And I am only 300 credits away from a tavern. Um, and, or the foundry. I'm not, no, 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 I can't, I can't retire. I cannot retire because I'm going to be a farmer on this area. I have to clean out this area to reclaim my home. I can't retire. Oh my God. Oh, wait, wait, there's one more thing. There's one more thing. The Dwarven Co-op. Thanks to everyone coming together to form this financial cooperative, House Grand Rock as a whole gets an extra plus 200 credits after each expedition to use for the benefit of the whole settlement. So, <laughs> and I can afford, mm, I'm 100 credits away from affording that. I really, I, just to, just to, just to pause and talk about this real quick. Again, I love the homestead uh, building part of this. Um, I love, it's simplified, it's easy, it's got its full prices. This is, this is great, this is great. But your boy, Okay, this D this D eight now becomes a D six. Your boy is gonna continue on. Let's uh, let's roll another thing on the let's roll another thing on the table. Yeah, come on, my boy. Okay, let's see. Let's roll another thing on the random encounters table. Um, let's see. All right. 12. Some folks from, from the settlement have traveled to Chasm Barham to search for a lost family heirloom of great importance. They have, they have been gone for days and never returned. What's this heirloom? Why is it so significant? Okay, so I don't actually know that, um, I don't actually, you know what happened? He goes further down into the tunnel. Bit by bit, he gets deeper and deeper and deeper into this tunnel. And then he gets, he like, he realizes he, like he hasn't been paying, like he's been paying attention but also this has been a very stressful situation for him. He almost died. He almost died. He's down one health. Ooh, wait a second. I can, uh, actually speaking of being down one health, hold on a second. Let's see. 
I think my boy might. Am I in a secure place? Okay, here's what I think is gonna happen. I think my boy is actually gonna turn around, walk out of this fucking mine, and go back to his ship and take a fucking rest. Because this has been bad. Um, so we're gonna reset all of our stuff with that rest, and then he's gonna come back into the mine. He's gonna come back into the mine. So he's back to his four hit points. He's back. And as he's coming back, okay, so this whole entire thing has been very, um, this whole entire situation has been very stressful for him. He didn't know, he, he didn't know what to expect. Like he's never been in this area. He's been off being like at the monastery doing other things since he was a young boy. He never had to deal with the demon incursions or anything like that. So he comes back to this area after this has happened and he wasn't paying attention before, right? Or he was, but not to everything he was seeing. But now he's rested. He feels more prepared. He's like, I can do this. I can do this. And he goes in and he keeps going further in and he notices some footprints that he, that, and he turns and looks a little bit closer and notices, oh, there are some actual footprints in here that he should have noticed before. And he starts following them. They, they, they look, they look, they don't look like they're monstrous footprints. So maybe it's fine, but he starts to follow them. And eventually he comes, uh, to, he comes into a, he comes to a cavern. And the, the first thing he smell, the first thing is the smell, right? Definitely smells rotten flesh. Uh, definitely the telltale signs of dead bodies. So comes into this room and sees a number of, let's see. What are we thinking here? Okay, says some folks from the settlement. Um, the set settlements have our multicultural, multiracial, have all sorts of people from it. So we're gonna say these are a bunch of frog people. We're just gonna say they're frog people. Um, and comes in and finds a bunch of frog people, like four of them, all of them adults, but um, very clearly got, were attacked in this mine and just kind of ripped apart by something and is just very much vomits and then is like, okay, okay. I need to know what happened here. I need to figure it out. And it's gonna start looking at the bodies and whatnot. And to answer the questions that it has here, right? Um, they've been gone for days and never returned. What's this heirloom? Uh, <laughs> I called them frog people, and so one of my, one of one of my viewers, said the French got them. French demons. That's that's so fucking. <laughs> um, he starts kind of picking through this. Okay, what is the heirloom? Hey, chat. What do you think this heirloom is? What do you think is like? Do you think it's? Do you think it's just kind of a mundane heirloom that's just like got that's got like family since values and sentimentality do you think it's an heirloom that belongs to the family do you think it's an heirloom that they heard about that belongs to another family that they came by to try and take because it's valuable in one way or another i like i've already had the fact that a human corporation sent a death squad to murder everybody at his monastery and he just barely got away. I don't know if I want all of my instances of people dying or doing terrible things to be from greed. So I think I'm gonna say that the heirloom is definitely a giant <laughs> mother You know what, fine. I asked the chat what it is and we're gonna stick on theme. Um, it is a giant golden fly. It belongs to the family and to and to those people. Um, and it's just, it's it's, start my okay do to do, do, do hello hello okay had to restart the captioner um and yeah it's not magical or anything it's just it's it's sentimentality but it's also worth something so um i mean i don't think it's inherently worth something like it's not a loot item right it's just something we found but i'm gonna put this in here giant golden fly um, okay, but yes, picks this up, puts it in his bag, and is 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 there's kind of something going on in his head is contemplating like, what do I do with this? Do I return it to the people? Do I keep it and spend it and and sell it and and you know make this a safe space? Is wrestling with 
is wrestling with what he owes, like what he owes his own family and what he owes to the people that this probably belongs to. All right, y'all. So we are coming up on the end of the stream and my man has not in any way, shape or form explored the bulk of this place. So in this moment to actually get to a fight, Just to re, just to just to rewind real quick. After saying what's what's it mean? What's it what's it's worth? Uh, Rowles in the chat says, "Of course it's worth something. It means something to the people. It represents the hope of a nation of frog peoples. It's worth everything." <laughs> oh man! But back on back on track. So we're coming to the end of this, and I would actually like my man to get into an actual fight, um, and stay there. So. He has navigated his way in and out of these tunnels, finding riches, avoiding fights because the man's like, actually, no, I'm not dealing with this and gotten to the end of this, of this tunnel with this red glowing hue. Um, and let's see, what does he, who does he find? Oh my God. Oof. Oof. Let's roll about it. I do think they're, I do think there is, um, I do think there is a legit demon in here. So let's, let's, let's roll about it. God, God. Fuck. Fuck. Okay, so there is a blazing, there is a blazing, okay, so wait, it's a D10 on that. It's, it's, it's a 10 on that. Okay, let's look at the next guy. Let's get the full thing rolled here. Oh my fucking God. Be so fucking for real. Have I ever gotten luckier in my life? I don't think so. My, bruh. Okay, so there is a blazing imp spider in here. There's a blazing imp spider in here. And I think the glowing light is coming from its eyes. Like it's got, it doesn't just have the eight eyes here. It's got eyes all over its body. And that is the glowing red light. Yep, fly demon, I do believe it's just Beelzebub. Um, but yes, and let's see. Let's roll for its traits real quick. Its head. It's got horns coming out from around the eyes on the head and its body. Oh, that's a D20, that's not a D12. And it's got a blundering tail as well. So a spider-like demon with eye, red glowing eyes all over its body, horns coming from the top of its head and a tail at the end of it where it's like, where you might expect a stinger to be. It's just <laughs> thrashing around. He comes into this room and there is there are spider webs all over the place. Um, wrapped up are, are like the, the decayed remains, the liquefied remains of different bodies. And the spider is currently just kind of Um, that's all you can hear is the sound. Well, actually, no, it glows and it's just kind of like skittering across the walls and stuff. Webs made of pure fire. Absolutely not. Why are you like this? I'm not making this harder for my guy. Um, and like he just kind of pokes his head. Because my guy. I'm going to say my boy is initiating this and is going to gun go in guns of blazing. So it's going to take the shotgun out. Um, I want y'all to guess how many hit points this creature has. It's gonna take the shotgun out and it's gonna roll to hit. Ooh, fuck yeah. Okay, so I rolled a four on his D8, which means I deal two points of damage to this creature, right? And my D8 becomes a D6. Um, ooh, actually, you know what, you know what? Mm. Sorry, y'all. Uh, okay, so actually, is that what I'm gonna do? I think I'm actually gonna, hold on a second. I do have an ability. My shotgun has explosive bullets. Hmm. 
Okay, I don't have an ability that activates that. I think my I think my shotgun just has explosive bullets. So that is Oh wait, so did I just get the Yeah, so it's just a D6. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Oh, so I'm using yeah, I'm using my explosive bullets. I've done two points of damage to this creature. Oh, you think it has 15 hit points? You want me to you want me to say, Your shotgun has explosive bullets. Okay, so as I fire this off to Boom, at this creature, the shot, like the, the explosive pellets, the explosive pellets from the shotgun hit it, uh, hit it straight in the face and then also hit the various webbing and <sighs> lights on fire. Um, thank you for the suggestion chat that uh, it sets the webs on fire. And now it is the creature's turn, right? Okay, so the cr this creature actually only has three hit points because I rolled randomly for its hit points. Um, because I didn't think it was fair for me to choose it, and I rolled three hit points. Um, and now it's its turn, and it's gonna attack me. Um, it has a fucking... So it does have a higher hit die than I do, but that doesn't matter. That doesn't... It has a higher chance to roll to hit me really hard. It has a higher chance to roll and hit me really hard. I said that, and do you know what this fucker just did? This fucker just did three points of damage to me. So I am down to one hit point. And because you and I both know a monster, unless there's a strategy here, is not going to go first, is not going to allow the enemy to go first, it's gonna go first. This is the end. I bare minimum do one damage. So let's see how bad it is though. So I have used my shotgun at this creature, setting it ablaze, um, firing off these bullets into its eyes, uh, causing some of the light to dim, but it lets out a horrific fucking screech, horrific fucking screech and launches itself from the web, drives me into the ground with its pincers and stabs them both into my shoulder blades, pierce, pin, pinning me to the ground. And I'm just, uh, uh, uh. As I'm trying to maneuver my way out of here, trying to block its actual, like, it uses, it uses its legs to pin me into the ground, and I'm trying to, like, use my shotgun to block its pincers trying to get to me. The struggle continues for a little bit, and it's, it's, I'm so tired, I'm so weak, bleeding out, and for a moment, just a moment, my focus slips. And in that next second, the, the last thing I see is it's coming down, it's actual pincers coming down towards my neck and then darkness. This guy did another three points of damage to me when I only had one hit point. The tale of uh, Harbram of the Grand Rock clan has sadly come to an end. As the last living relative, relative of his grandfather and the last, the head of the Grand Rock clan, yes, his family line is no longer in charge. The riches that he found in this red tunnel will lay here The riches that he found in this in this in this red glowing tunnel will lay here for eternity or until another or others hopefully are brave enough or foolish enough to come and search it as well to reclaim their home. And that's the end of that game, y'all. I died. I uh I did some uh I didn't do enough damage and if I would have rolled a little bit better, if I had a thought, I should, I, so just to do the quick postmortem a little bit on this, right? So first off, um, for the stream purposes, one of my commenters like, what happened to running away, L O L M A O. This is the end of the stream. This is the end of the stream. There's no way I'm running away from another battle at the end of the stream. We gotta, we gotta talk, we gotta, we had to get into some combat here. This is the end of the stream. So we got into some combat. A little bit of the postmortem. I probably would have, well, actually, let, let, let me find out. Probably is kind of a strong word. Yeah, okay. So, 
<laughs> I am in fact running away from y'all. Unfortunately, I have uh, other work to get done. I would love to just stay and stream the entire day. One of these days I might just stream for 12 hours or something, doing something, I don't know. But a little post-mortem on this. Um, something, something that I didn't do, I like, I got, I, I had a lot of fun. I got caught, I think I got caught up in the storytelling and describing of things. And I didn't try and do the upper hand because if I had tried and gotten the upper hand from like describing something in the room, I would have done three points of damage and just killed this guy. I would have done three points of damage and the fight would have been over immediately. But because I, the player didn't do that, <laughs> because I, the player, didn't think to do the upper hand. It came back to bite me in the ass, right? So that's my like my quick postmortem. I am gonna have a longer video. <laughs> um sorry, to finish this. Postmortem, love the storytelling as mechanics. Um, love this whole, God, I'm, 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 first off, I'm in love with, I'm in love with the system. It's easy. I like read it once. I understood it. I read it again last night. I understood it. And then I read it once more this morning. I didn't need to read it three times. I just was like, let me make sure I know what I'm talking about because not only am I like playing this, I'm I like, I'm also, you know, hoping people will go and support the Kickstarter for it based off what I've told you about. Um, so one, I'm in love with the system. Uh, two, again, this is just, this is not on the game. This is on me for not remembering that I can describe, I can like, since I'm the one describing the room, I can narratively describe things be like, oh, hey, can I do, like, maybe I can do this to try and get the upper hand. Like maybe I can like fuck up the webbing to get it off balance and then to attack. Um, so and if I had remembered, if I had thought about that, if I had, if I had remembered that, so that's on me, I would have actually killed this thing. And my guy Harbum wouldn't be dead. And one of the many bodies that are just left here. Um, but overall, this is a really fun little system. Um, again, y'all, I am going to be dropping like a full recorded uh, post-mortem, post my first one over on YouTube on uh, April 11th, which is when the Kickstarter launches. So let me drop that for y'all in the chat again, in case you aren't, <laughs> you didn't check it out yet uh that is stone burner and then also reminder on sunday this sunday so on the 9th at 10 a.m edt right because edt and est are technically different i will be back here i joined a uh firelights jam which is another game that i played on this channel uh by the same author of Stoneburner, and I have to make a game about it. I joined it. It's my first itch jam. It's my first, yeah, it's my first itch jam. And I'm making it, I, and I'm gonna be making it while we're on stream for a couple of hours. It's uh, specifically about uh, you're a vampire hunter, you hunt down rogue vampires, um, you feed on said rogue vampires, but you gotta be careful if you feed too much or feed too little you turn into a rogue vampire yourself and then you get hunted. So we're gonna be making that game over on Sunday at 10 a.m. EDT. And then next week, we're going back to our regularly scheduled programming. Mondays, 7 p.m. Wednesdays, 9 a.m. EDT for more games, <laughs> all right? Uh, thank you everybody for being here in the chat with me. Appreciate all of you that have subscribed um, and have followed. And uh, I will see you, hopefully see a bunch of y'all on Sunday in the morning catch you later please if you have been if you liked what you saw here go and back um fuck me going back stone burner i literally just lost my whole train of thought in that moment going back stone burner as soon as it launches get notified when it launches so check out the pre-launch um catch everybody later have a great one have a great weekend have a great rest of your evening day morning whatever time zone you're in